Hi, I'm Peng Wu. I'm the engineering manager supporting PyTorch compilers. Today, I'm going to share an exciting new vision of compiler accelerated PyTorch. PyTorch is beloved, but we are aware of some historical bottleneck that might limit the scaling and efficiency of PyTorch. And now we are envisioning a new era of super accelerated PyTorch through compiler technologies. That's why a compiler person like me is here presenting, even though compilers are probably not on the top of mind of most machine learning researchers. And in today's talk, we're going to zoom in on one technology that we felt would unlock this new vision, something that we are surprised is so critical as a compiler veteran. I'll, hold, I'll let you hold your breath on this. But before I introduce this story, let me first give you some context. So. There are many machine learning compilers. First of all, I want to set people's mental model on what kind of compilers we're talking about. So if you have a model and you run it on the machine learning framework, and sometimes you rely on compiler technologies to map it down to the underlying hardware. And there's one way to do it from top to bottom, which is what we call the machine learning framework compiler. And this is where PyTorch compilers belong to. And there is another approach, which is going from bottom up, from hardware towards the model side. And those compilers are called hardware compiler or machine learning accelerated compilers. So machine learning framework compilers serves the purpose of usually enabling a smooth passage from model world to the hardware. And here, the, the ability to have a smooth pathway is the most important thing. And unlike other machine learning frameworks, PyTorch is actually not designed with compilers or graph in mind. And this is why we say what makes PyTorch beloved, this flexibility and eager mode execution is actually making it really, really hard to compile. And as a framework compiler, a lot of our challenges were really caused by the design principles of the corresponding machine learning framework. So the Challenges of compiling for PyTorch is kind of well known within the community. For example, it's very hard to get graph representations of PyTorch because PyTorch it doesn't ask users to think about graphs. So capturing graphs for PyTorch is really non-trivial. And number two, PyTorch has these ops that are very efficient to use, such as in-place ops or view ops that avoid a lot of memory copy, data copy beloved by users, but not so by hardware vendors. So there is a semantic or impotence mismatch between what the hardware can support and what are the basic semantics of PyTorch. And finally, PyTorch has a lot of ops. And that means for any new hardware vendors to integrate with PyTorch if they want to support Completely the offset of PyTorch is really, really challenging because we have a really large integration surface. So before we introduce the new technology, let me give you some background of the past technology. So our very first PyTorch compiler is called TorchScript. TorchScript is widely used. And in this example, I just want to show what it means to users to use it. So basically, TorchScript is a domain-specific language that supports subset of Python, and it requires users to annotate PyTorch model with some types and some regions so that the compiler is able to capture graphs out of models. In this example, it's actually pretty easy to use it. But in, in real complex models, actually, the amount of annotations required is proportional to the size, uh, the, the, the code size, or the complexity of the model. So TorchScript, the way we classify the graph capture mechanism of TorchScript is that it's ahead of time graph capture and always capture whole graph. And the reason we designed it this way is because it's initially designed for export paths. Export paths meaning that you capture the graph once and then you export out of Python environment and eager environment so that you can execute this model in a more efficient environment or if the environment has a lot of constraints. So this is very suitable to inference at scale and for edge devices. 
TorchScript also has non-limitations, most noticeably the user experience interface. It requires human in the loop annotating types and it's hard to use. And secondly, historically, it's designed for inference, so the training support is incomplete. After TorchScript, actually, we have come out with new generations of compiler technologies like FX and Lazy Tensor. They have addressed some aspect of TorchScript limitations, but not all of them. And given the fragmented compiler technology space here, we started to ask ourselves, what is this one thing that we could change in the compiler stack that would fundamentally shift the efficiency of PyTorch? And the answer surprised us. As a compiler veteran, usually we think about, okay, adding one more optimizations or adding one more hardware. And actually we seldom pay attention to the front end of a compiler. It's almost considered as a given. But when we look at the entire stack of PyTorch compilers, we realize actually the graph capture component is the choking point of the entire system. So this is where we found that we really need better graph, graph capture technology so that we can unlock the potential for compilers for the PyTorch ecosystem. And this is what I'm going to talk about next, about graph capture. So who are the people who should care about PyTorch graph capture? Chip designers? Because for accelerators, even very powerful ones at GPU, eager mode execution, which is one op at the time, could be prohibitively expensive. So accelerators usually prefer to have multiple ops or even the entire model completely offloaded to the hardware. So that's why graph capture is really important. And also for production engineers, for example, most of the PyTorch inference deployments at scale are using export mode, where we export out of eager mode with a whole graph capture so that we can execute it in a more efficient way. And finally, the compiler engineer is very, very simple. Without graph, there is no compiler to talk about. So let me introduce Torch Dynamo. This is our nth generation PyTorch compiler front end, but it is our first one that is out of box. And also, it works for training. So comparing Torch Dynamo with TorchScript front-end, from the user experience point of view, number one, Dynamo doesn't require users to change the model. So that's why we call it an out-of-box graph capture. And secondly, it can reliably capture backward graphs, and that makes it suitable for training. So if you use Dynamo combined with a good backend, in theory, you can make unmodified PyTorch models faster. And I'll show you later. In reality, it does so too. So let me give you an example of how does it look like to use Dynamo. In this example, we have three portions. So the top portion toy example is the model that we're trying to capture graphs for. And you can ignore the middle portion and look at the, the bottom portion where this is exactly where users need to annotate the code by just indicating, OK, this is a portion of the model that we want to apply Torch Dynamo for graph capture. This is actually different from the kind of annotation that Torch Grip requires, because it's no matter how complex is your model, you just need to add this one line. It's not proportional to the complexity of the model. On the right-hand side, in this example, actually, the middle portion is a toy compiler that just for demonstration purposes. Basically, we tell the compiler to print out whatever graph we receive. So the right-hand side is actually the output of running this program. And one thing noticeable about Torch Dynamo graph capture is that for a model, we are not capturing a single graph. In this case, we deliberately designed the toy example to, to have some control flow. And in this case, Dynamo would graph break on control flow. It's actually a data dependent control flow. So to the right hand side, we see three portion, three graphs that's been printed for the toy example to the left. This is actually a feature, not a bug of Torch Dynamo. It's actually fundamental to why Torch Dynamo is out of box. So let me give you some intuition on why Torch Dynamo graph capture is sound and out of box, where the previous ones cannot claim such. 
So number one is this partial graph capture. So the way we look at graph capture for PyTorch is that we want to capture the tensor computation that's involved in PyTorch, but not arbitrary Python constructs, because otherwise you would have to optimize for entire Python programs. And this is the intention for any PyTorch compilers. And the challenge here is if a model contains code, that is not the typical tensor computation. For example, printing a log, what do you do? So in the previous generation of graph capture, we have to work around those. And for Dynamo, we take a different approach. So instead of shooting for capturing entire graph in one model, we capture as much as we can, and then we fall back to eager to execute the portions that we don't care about. And then we can restart capturing another graph. So that's how in the previous example, we actually have three fragments of graphs that's been captured. So basically, partial graph capture allows the graph capture front end to be able to skip unwanted parts of a PyTorch model that's executing in eager. And secondly, Torch Dynamo, like any previous capturing mechanism, is using tracing mechanism. And in order to avoid repeatedly capturing the same graph, we, we often would capture a graph once and replay it many times. And here is where soundness can, can be the issue. Because when you capture a graph, you might have big in some conditions that's true for the capturing time, but no longer true for the playing time. And Dynamo is the first one where we design the design guards to explicitly specify the assumptions that we made during capturing time. And with these guards, we have one part of the puzzle of making the whole system sound. The other part of the puzzle is a third component where once we have guards on the graphs, and when we're replaying this graph, we can check if the guard condition is satisfied at the runtime. If it's not, we can recapture a new graph just in time. So with these three features, partial graph capture, guarded graphs, and just-in-time recapture, Dynamo is able to capture a graph soundly and without, with very, very little user intervention. As I mentioned before, that graph capture is just the front end of the compiler. By itself, it doesn't improve performance. So the power of Dynamo is really to funnel graphs being captured into optimizing backends. And because of that, we specifically designed the system so that integrating a new backend into Torch Dynamo is very, very easy. So in this example, we have a four-liner that integrate um, the Torch script optimizing backend with Torch Dynamo. And we actually repeat similar kind of lines of change for many other backends. So Dynamo today is not yet officially released, but it's available on GitHub. But in order to show that this is not just a vision, but we actually collected strong signals that it actually worked, I want to show you some numbers. So the first number, 7K plus, is the number of crawled GitHub models, PyTorch models that we are able to funnel through Torch Dynamo, through partial graph capture, through fallback and execution to validate actually Torch Dynamo graph capture indeed works out of box. So all of these models, we simply just need to add these liners to indicate which part Dynamo needs to capture graph, and we don't need to change anything else. The second number is to demonstrate the ease of integration of to Torch Dynamo. So 20 plus is the number of inference backend we are able to integrate with Torch Dynamo today. And we also observe a very interesting phenomenon that some of the inference backends have, have their own front end, like Torch Script. But with Torch Dynamo, we are able to actually cover a lot more models just by changing the front end. And number two is for the number of training backends that we have integrated with Torch Dynamo. And this is not a limitation of Dynamo itself. It's more of there aren't a lot of backends that are designed for training. And here we are focusing on GPU backends. And the last number is really important because we really want to demonstrate that this partial graph, guarded graph capture, and just-in-time graph capture provided by Torch Dynamo indeed can lead to performance improvement if it's combined with a powerful backend. So we measured 
three benchmark suites, Torch Bench, Tim, and Hugging Face, overall more than 150 models. And we have observed speed up, geo mean speed up of more than 30%. Using the Tynamo technology, we've never been able to achieve that on long tail models with the previous generations of technology. So, before the official release of Dynamo, there is still a lot of work that needs to be done. So, here are some highlights. We are working really hard on hardening the technology and developing tools. And we are also looking into capturing graphs and compiling it with dynamic shape. This is really, really critical for production models. We're looking into making sure Dynamo works smoothly with existing distributed APIs so there is composability there. And we're also looking at, because it's a just-in-time environment, so we're looking at the recompilation metrics such as code start time, the, the first time, how long it takes to compile, and warm start time, and so on and so forth. And finally, we're also looking at whole graph capture because even though Dynamo is designed for partial graph capture, we understand that the larger the graph, the better the optimization scope. And in certain cases, for example, for export paths, a whole graph capture is really essential. So we are also exploring in that direction. So let's step back to our original story from PyTorch models to running efficiently on hardware and for scaling. So this picture actually captures the entire ecosystem where to be able to super accelerate PyTorch is really not just the machine learning compiler, it's not just the accelerated compiler, but everything together. So there are three layers in this ecosystem. In this talk, we focused on the top layer, which is the graph capture component. But the actual lifting of performance actually happened at the last layer where the hardware or the optimizing compiler is delivering performance. But the reason that we are focusing on the top layer is because we felt that right now for the whole system, we have a choke point of not having enough graphs flowing through the underlying compiler that would actually deliver performance. So today, if you look at the landscape, we still have a fragmented landscape. We have at least four or even more front ends for different cases, inference versus training. In the next slide, I'm going to show you actually what's the recommendation of which front end technologies to use. But I want to highlight that the training landscape was really new. Even though we have lady tender there, we definitely recommend that for training scenarios to use Torch Dynamo as the primary graph capture mechanism. And lazy tensor is recommended for mainly if you want a bridge to XLA or to use TPU. So this slide actually summarizes what graph capture mechanisms to use. And this is our thinking today. What is really exciting is the future. The, the vision we have is actually that top layer. We really want to unify graph captures for export paths and for eager, for inference and for training into one smooth UX based on Dynamo technology. And our thinking is that Dynamo is naturally designed for partial graph capture, but with some user intervention, we could also make it to capture whole graph. And the, the UX would be a lot smoother than before of using two very separate technologies. We want the user to start with partial graph capture and, and get some performance benefits by connecting with the backend. And then if they really want to have whole graph or if they can benefit from larger graph, they can put in some manual effort to get to whole graph. So this is our vision of unifying the top layer of that picture. So finally, what is the story that we've told today? Number one, PyTorch. What makes PyTorch beloved makes it really hard to compile. So we have some unique challenges in making an effective compiler for PyTorch. We presented Torch Dynamo, our latest generation of PyTorch graph capture mechanism, which is the first one that is out of box and also soundly capturing graph for many models. And the key takeaway for, for this technology is that imagine now that you can have most of PyTorch models to be funneled through the graph world with almost no user intervention, 
And that allowed all the backend compilers to be able to apply their technologies on PyTorch. And that's why I say that the era of compiler accelerated PyTorch is arriving. So this is a pretty big vision. And right now we are focusing on training. And a lot of things are in the planning. I'm just going to drop a few keywords here. Dynamic shape, prim, export pass, compiler-based distributed. Some of them are already in the working. Some, some of them are still in the design phase. So I'm going to leave a teaser here. If you want to try out Torch Dynamo today, you can get it on GitHub. Just search for PyTorch Torch Dynamo. And, but if you want to hear the full story of our new vision, stay tuned to the next PyTorch conference. Thank you.